Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about leading others during a period of emotional exhaustion. Welcome to Invincible Innovation Live Show. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm Adima Zorkario, Product Innovation and Value Creation Expert, and I'll be your host. And today I have a very, very special guest. Hey, Michelle. Hi, Adi. How are you? I'm good. So my, my guest today is Michelle E. Dickinson, and she's a resilient coach and a workplace mental health strategist. And I'm sure you're going to have a really, really nice conversation. It's, it's already started. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a bit about Michelle. Michelle's goal is to eliminate the stigma by normalizing the mental health conversation in workplace and beyond. She partners with innovative leaders to bring mental health strategies to their organizations. So we have like a really good start. We're live on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook, and you're so invited to join the discussion and would love to hear what you think. And now we can start. So we have this really big, like, I think, topic. So let's start with how to cultivate resilient team. Yeah, that's, that's a question I get all the time. And I get it from my corporate clients and I get it from my one-on-one -on -one clients who want to help themselves. They want to help their, their family, their friends, their, their colleagues. Um, and, you know, it comes down to what are you doing every day? I believe that when we talk about mental health, there's, there are absolutely things that we can be doing to preserve our emotional well-being and also to boost our resilience. So I'm always, the first thing I do with my clients is we go through a resilience audit and we really look at like every single thing that they're doing. What is their routine like? Because with small micro changes, they can start to feel better and feel more empowered just by making small changes in their routine. So I think resilience is really a daily practice. It's not something that we can think about, like, we'll, we'll go get some resilience at the store and come home. It's like, it's something you got to do yeah. every day. Yeah. So what we're talking about, we're talking about like getting some rest, going to the sun, going outside, meeting people. So give me like some of the tips that are related yeah. to resilience. What do you do? First thing you wake up in the morning, what are you doing? Are you grabbing this <laughs> or are you are you taking some time for yourself are you sitting in prayer or are you sitting in meditation are you um, getting present to the abundance in your life oftentimes you know out of habit we turn on the news and we're our our mind and our subconscious mind we're consuming everything that's wrong with the world right everything that's wrong all the upset all the pain and the first hour we, we, when we wake up, it is the most tender hour for our brain. So what we choose to do in that first hour sets the tone for our entire day. So I always tell people like, you know, sit for a few minutes or, you know, practice a gratitude strategy, do a, a journal entry or, you know, go for a run or, or, or do something physical for your body. Do something that is going to nourish yourself um, instead of deplete yourself already. So when we're talking about resilient teams, we're talking with a group of people that first take care of themselves yes. from the beginning, taking responsibility for their own resilience. And yes. then they could be a good team. It's not enough to have one leader and that's enough. Right, exactly. But you have to have a leader, and I know we're going to talk about this, you have to have a leader that is modeling these, these things as well, right? You can't you can't expect to have a resilient team when you don't even demonstrate you know, that you... Um, care about your own well-being and you make the, the you have the personal boundaries in place to take care of yourself. Um, and you know it, it's it's important. you know individuals have to take accountability, but leaders have to show what does that look like and, and how do I make sure that I show up the best version of myself for you and serve you as my as my staff? Yeah. And, and more than that, I think that leaders need to understand that this is something that they should attend to in, in their uh, team. So just yeah. thinking about the, the resilience and the well-being mm -hmm. of their team is, is more than just, you know, once in a while giving them a raise or just, you know, we are having a fun day out with all of the team once in a quarter or, or a year, whatever. Yeah. It's not yeah. enough. Right. It, it, it definitely, you know, I say this to most of the women that I coach, I'm like, you cannot expect to undo compounded stress with a trip to the spa, with, you know, the birthday massage. Like, we have to take care of our emotional well-being and preserve our, our mental health and our resiliency through daily practices so that we don't find ourselves depleted and on the pathway to burnout. And that's something that, you know, a lot of people are talking about now. But 
it starts every single day, every morning when you wake up and what your practices are. Sure. I'm very happy that we're having this conversation, you know, after these like very two, very hard two years. And according to Forbes, more than 69% of employees are experienced burnout symptoms while working from home. So what do you think companies should do? And, and should they say, okay, we're going back to the office and that's it? Yeah, it's interesting because I think when you look at the data, burnout was at its highest when everybody started to work from home. And you would have thought it would have been the other way around. But the problem was, is people didn't have personal boundaries. They no longer had the bookends of the day where I drive to the office, I do my work, and then I drive home. It was mornings were blending into afternoons, were blending into evenings, were blending into, you know, after dinner time. So people were were wanting to be dedicated and in that they were like not having personal boundaries to be able to say, I work from this time to this time. So that was why so many people were burning out. And I don't think, and people are asking me this question quite frequently now, it's not about where you work. Yes, it's great to be in a community at work in the office, connected to people. And that's so healthy for our human nature. We, we are people people, you know, like we need to be around sure. others. Sure. I think what, what it boils down to is are, are your staff members equipped and aware, self-aware of what they need for themselves, regardless of where they're working? Um, and are they, are they taking that seriously and not, you know, giving up their power to an employer that's going to dictate whether or not, you know, they take care of themselves? I always say to my clients, like, nobody's going to come along and say, you have too much stress on your plate. Let me take that away. So now you have some time to go take care of yourself. It doesn't work that way. We have to be a little bit selfish and a little bit, um, you know, uh, have non-negotiable routines.